So guys, I'm gonna do a little uh, video on how to enable the t what is it, TPM 2.0 on your computer if you're trying to upgrade to Windows 11 or install Windows 11. But first, you need to meet the requirements for it though. Like it here in this website right here, Microsoft.com. Just find this. This is Windows 11 specs, features, and computer requirements. So it's not gonna work every or every time because it might be different for everyone. Not everyone will be able to install this so and that's what like I said a lot of people are mad about you know having to upgrade not only the software but the hardware part so is this right here you need a processor one gigahertz compatible 64 bit process or more course with two or more course RAM 4 gigabytes minimum it says storage 64 gigabytes or larger storage and you can click on this you know for more information system firmware uefi secure boot capable and then here's the one i'm talking about the tpm trusted platform module trusted platform so version 2.0 for instructions now your pc might be enabled mine's already enabled because i already updated the bios but i'll show you guys how to enable it at least in mine because my motherboard is an asus prime z370p so it might be different for everybody so like i said here's more information system requirements for co-pilot pcs Six. all right new class of windows 11 AI pcs are powered by a turbocharged neural processing unit specialized computer chip for ai blah 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 to run a compatible processor system on the chip ai amd ryzen ai i'm not re i don't run into that storage okay so you need internet connection and a Microsoft account. So first, we're gonna restart my my PC. <coughs> then I'll show you guys what to do next. First, we're gonna go to start button right here. And then shut. And then restart basically power and then restart okay, so I restarted the, P the PC so now I'm gonna press delete on the keyboard here delete button once the this show up the screen with the BIOS Okay, we're here. See, press delete or F2. Press delete repeatedly until the screen changes. So what we're trying to do is change, uh, I mean change, we're trying to enable the TPM 2.0 trusted platform tech. Tra I mean, what is it, trusted platform? So I got XMP enabled right here. And speed okay so got all your information here in the bios so what you're gonna do is go to advanced mode because mine is an asus prime uh z370-p z370-p prime that's my motherboard bios version 3004 that's the latest bios update i don't know if there's a new one but that's the new one for mine Pretty good temperatures, 30, 34. Now we're gonna go to advanced mode, click on that, and then you're gonna look for how to enable TPM 2.0. What is it? Trust, what, trusted platform module or something like that. So we're gonna go there, we're gonna go to. So only do this if you know what you're doing. So I already pressed advanced, so now we're in advanced mode. So we're gonna go to advanced tab right here. You're on main right now, main tab. You can look at all the BIOS information. Date, version and firmware. Your CPU and your clock speed, your RAM and your frequency, memory frequency and all that. All that. So we're gonna go to advanced right here. Click on that. I'm gonna go to Oh, here it is. We're gonna go to PCHFW configuration. 
right there and then what you're gonna do is once you've seen this Intel platform trust technology which is the T that's the TPM you're gonna enable it so mine's already enabled so you're gonna click this if it's disabled click enabled and then once you're done see that's how you enable it at least on my version exit and then it'll ask you if you want to save see exit click on exit tab and what you're gonna do is save changes and reset you know or already changed mine so like I said it's already enabled when I up the, updated the BIOS see it's right there save and reset you have not made any changes so but if you, it's if it says you have made some changes it'll say it's enabled right here and then you just click OK and save and reset. Click OK and it'll reset and now you'll have TPM enabled. You know, that's how you enable it. If you're trying to upgrade to Windows 11 you want to enable TPM 2.0. So now it's going to go back and now you just got to log in and you're good. And then you can go ahead and upgrade Windows 11 if you can, if you're, you have the hardware. But if you're, you don't have the hardware, it's not going to enable you to log in. I mean log in. Not going to enable you to upgrade. So you'll be stuck with uh, Windows 10. So yeah. Good luck. Okay, well, now that you're logged in, what you're going to do is go here in the bottom. Here's the start. What you're going to do is go in the search bar. This is once you're already upgraded to Windows 11. You're gonna type run, R U N, run, and then you're gonna click on run right here. It's run system. And here you're gonna type in what I'm I type. You're gonna type in tpm.msc. Tpm.msc. That will let you know if you've already, you know, your thing is tpm enabled and you know, information see right there TPM is ready for use basically which stands for trusted platform module that's the one everyone's talking about that you need sometimes when you're I mean not sometimes but the, the one that's requiring people when they're upgrading to Windows 11 but like I said if your PC or laptop can't upgrade it then you're stuck with Windows 10 because you don't have the hardware capability even though you, if it says you you have TPM and but you're you don't have the hardware requirements, then it's not gonna work. And your either your computer's too old, it's a 32-bit system or whatnot, or I don't know exactly. But so yeah, like my my computer's a uh, I got an i7 8700K CPU Intel with a RTX 3070 graphics card with 64 gigabytes of RAM Corsair Corsair Vengeance I think that is called 64 so 32 I got two sticks of RAM 32 gigs and 32 gigs so 64 gigs that's more than enough and then I got a a lot of storage I got two terabytes of SK Hynix M.2 NVMe and I got a Samsung QV oh, or QVU or something like that, QVU. Uh, what is it? 870 something? Uh, it's uh, two terabytes of Samsung SSD. And I got 16 terabyte Toshiba HDD hard disk drive. So more than enough storage. I got, like I said, I got two solid state drives that are. So yeah, TPM is ready. You make clear. Yada yada, and here's the specification. If you scroll here, there's version 2.0. So yeah, so that's how you know. Okay, hopefully, hope this helps, and good luck with trying to upgrade Windows 11. Or if not, then you can do what everyone's doing right now. You can go ahead and switch to Linux or something. Because a lot of people are pissed about this and I cannot totally understand like I mean I understand that people are mad that 
Windows 11 is restricted to, you know, more powerful and more latest, newest hardware. It's no longer backwards compatible, and that's I'm also upset about that. So Microsoft, you're you're effing up, man. You f around and find out. You're gonna piss off a lot of people and users and customers, and you're gonna you're gonna force them to go to the other side. It's kind of like what they're doing with their Xbox brand. You're gonna force people to go to the other side, or either go to the Nintendo or PlayStation or PC gaming. Like I don't know, Microsoft, Xbox are just. I don't know what they're doing over there. They're just screwing around too much. And plus, see, they're messing around with their computers all well with Windows 11. They, you know what they should have done? They should have created two versions of Windows 11. They should have made a like a one that's for 32-bit systems and one for 64-bit systems. That way, you can have backwards compatible. Like the people who wants to download Windows 11, it'll have a much weaker version of that or a smaller not as complicated version and then you can have the one for new computers so you know two versions of the same thing Windows 11 for all older systems older hardware and uh, Windows 11 for newer hardware like Windows old you can call it Windows 11 retro and then you can call the newer one Windows 11 Neo see Neo and retro I'm just trying to get advice here Microsoft you know hopefully they do you ever watch my video or listen to what I'm saying? Cause this is not this is not the way to go, man. This is not how you do things. You're gonna piss off a lot of customers and you're gonna lose them. And that that's I don't know. That's a bad this this a uh, bad business decisions. You know. So yeah. Hopefully they turn this around with a future version of Windows and maybe like a Windows 12. Hopefully it's better than Windows 11. They might as well skip Windows 11 and just, you know, they can take Windows 10 and make it like an upgraded, upgraded and make it Windows 12, but still retain Windows 10, because Windows 11 ain't it, man. All this bloatware and all this, because right now, I mean, I got really no problem. See, look, I look here, like, my hardware is capable, see, it's capable of handling it. Look at the, look at the temps. See, low temps, 91 degrees. It's not really using a lot. A lot of people are getting high temperatures. I'm gonna make a separate video on that, on how to disable some stuff on Windows 11 so you can guys have lower temperatures. Because I heard that some people's temperatures are spiking up. Because there's a lot of stuff that's, you know, going on the background of this. But right now, I'm not really having problems. See, like if I look at the core temp. See right now I got see 34 degrees, 31 frequency clock goes up and down. See load is small even on idle. Some people get I heard they get 50 or 60 or 70 degrees Celsius, and that's not good. It's way too hot. But that's when you're on idle, it's supposed to be around this temp, 30, 30 to 30 to 30 to 40 degrees is good on idle. So. So right now, yeah. All right, so yeah, like I said, one can also use a CPU ID monitor for more details, or HW monitor. That 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 has more details on all your. Let's go ahead and close this. Oh wait. See, it gives you all the temperatures that you want, all the information. See, I got low temps. Low CPU temps, right there, pretty good temperatures, 34, of course, Samsung is 31 degrees, this here, this is my other drive inside my computer, Samsung SSD 870 QVO, yeah that's the one I was saying, 2 terabytes, I got a Toshiba, the 15 gig, 31 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees, here's my SK Hynix, it says GP31, two, that's 2 terabytes, 39 degrees, because it's in usage right now. My external hard drive, which is a Western Digital, 42 degrees, NVIDIA RTX, 32 degrees, with a hot spot of 43. So yeah, I got good temps. So 
So yeah, it's not. I mean, like I said, my computer is able to handle Windows 11, no problem. So yeah. Later. Don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, share this video, and uh, when you hit the bell icon, when you hit the bell icon, click all, so you can see my new, new uh, latest uploads. Thanks for watching.